Hey guys, welcome back to day 24. We're talking about Vesper theory. What is Vesper theory? Well, it's valence, shell, electron, pair, repulsion, theory. So it's valence, shell, electron, pair, repulsion theory. What this says is that electron pairs, electron pairs, both bonding and non-bonding in the valence shell of the central atoms, atom or atoms, because there'll be more than one, in a molecule, repel each other and get as far apart as possible. And that kind of makes sense. Electrons will, they're negative, and negative charges will going to repel. Opposite to track, the same repel. Now there's two terms we're going to learn. The electron pair geometry, or sometimes they call it the electron pair arrangement, refers to the electron pairs around central atom. Both bonding and non-bonding. So the electron pair geometry or arrangement. We can go here. I like to make this green. Now, I want a little note here. Double and triple bonds count as one because they're in the same region of space. So whether there's one bond, one pair of electrons between two atoms, two pairs of electrons, three pairs of electrons, it still counts as one because that the two atoms, that's one region of space according to the central atom. The molecular shape, sometimes that's referred to as molecular geometry as well, refers to the shape of the molecule, which is the arrangement of atoms. So the shape is what is actually there. Okay, so when we look at this, you have this handout and the first column, the no lone pairs column, is the electron pair geometry or the electron pair arrangement. The shape, the molecular shape, can be all of them. So this band here, and we've got three pairs and one lone pair, that's a shape. It's not electron pair geometry or electron pair arrangement. So let's look at these electron pair geometries. Linear, the bond angle will be 180 degrees, which makes total sense because that's a line. Three pairs, three pairs would be trigonal planar. These bonds are 120 degrees apart. So it's three bonded atoms in a plane. So it's a it looks like an equilateral triangle. You can actually see the equilateral triangle right here in orange. Looks, it's an equilateral triangle, same on each side. The next one is tetrahedral. And this bond angle is 109.5 degrees. And why is it 109.5 degrees? It's 109.5 degrees. Because we are not 
up, down, left, right, or north, south, east, west. Rather, we are inside a tetrahedron. And so what is a tetrahedron? Well, if you see, that's a triangle over there. Pull this up for you. This is a triangle right here. There's one triangle. Another triangle is right there. There is a triangle on the bottom, and there's a triangle on the back. There's there's actually it's actually a four-sided, but the triangle on the back goes here to here to there. That's the triangle on the back. So it's actually a four-sided polygon. It's got four sides. They're all each side is an equilateral triangle called a tetrahedral or tetrahedron, excuse me. The shape is tetrahedral because it fits inside of a tetrahedron. It's perfectly symmetrical. Five pairs, trigonal, bipyramidal. So what do we have here? I have a 90 degree angle there. And then around the waist, so to speak, that's 120 degrees. So it's 90 and 120. If you look, these three atoms are on the same plane so if we look at the xyz plane here and the xyz plane oh, these two the dotted lines and this so the x-axis and the y-axis are on the same plane z is vertical these are on the z Right, and these other atoms are in the XY plane. So they're, they're all flat. We're just looking at them in an isometric view. So there's two bond angles. There's the 90 degrees right here. And this one's also 90 degrees. So those are 90 degrees. And the other ones around the three atoms are 120. Last but not least, octahedral. Fits inside of an octahedron. And all bond angles are 90 degrees. Now, if we look at the other shapes, like we stay down here with six pairs and one lone pair. So, this becomes a lone pair of electrons. It represents two electrons. So, there's still electron density there. It's just not bonding. Like a parking space is open, so to speak. Square pyramidal. Why is this square pyramidal? Well, they're again all 90 degree bond angles so it's this is like north south east west and then up square planar they're all they're all still 90 degrees so what happens is going from octahedral to square pyramidal you're just taking one of the atoms off going from octahedral to square planar you're taking two of the atoms off and on opposite sides of the molecule so and the picture has those two taken off However, you could take off those two, or we could take off those two, and you'd still end up with a square planar. Go up to five pairs. We have seesaw. That's weird. So what really is happening here is that this this atom up here and this atom down here would be on the same like plane as the paper. This one would be coming out at us. It's coming out of the paper. And this one's kind of going into the paper. So it actually looks like it has a seesaw, teeter-totter like shape. So those two light blue bonds, one's going into the page and one's going out of the page. And so you can actually, if you look at like a sawhorse or something like that, that's what we're looking at. T-shaped. All three of these are in the same plane. And so it looks like a T. Especially if you rotate it 90 degrees. Tetrahedral trigonal pyramidal. It's a triangular pyramid with, again, a lone pair of electrons. Bent has two pairs of electrons. And so it's just bent. So what are we doing? We're removing one and then we're removing two. Doesn't again, which doesn't matter which ones we remove, remove because they're all the same, it's all symmetrical. Bent with one lone pair, 
So those are the shapes. Now, if you take organic chemistry, the two pairs to four pairs, that's the main ones. But all of them are somewhat important. So now we are going to do pretty much example. So let's do those. I want to know what what is the electron pair geometry and the molecular shape of the following molecules. First one we'll start with is SCL2, and then we'll do NH2Cl. Well, if I want to know what the electron pair geometry is, would I just guess, or should I draw out the Lewis structure? My advice would be to always draw out these Lewis structures until you know what they are. Until you know what they are. So if I go back up here, well, we'll go back up there in a minute. Electron count. Sulfur has six valence electrons plus two times seven valence electrons for carbon or for chlorine. So that would be what? 20 valence electrons. So I have Cl, S, Cl. Bond them. Two, four, then fill in that text. Six, eight, ten, twelve. 14, 16. I have extra electrons. Where do extra electrons go? On the central atom. 18, 20. So that leaves us with what is the electron pair geometry, the EPG. Now, in class, a lot of students just say linear. And they say linear because I drew it in a straight line. And then I usually draw something myself on the on the screen that I'm, you know, six foot eight, uh, you know, two percent body fat and all that fun stuff. And everybody laughs because that's not what I really am. So it doesn't matter what I draw myself as. What I look like is what I look like, just like you know you. It doesn't matter if you want to be taller, shorter, you know, bigger muscles, smaller muscles. It doesn't matter. You are what you are. SCL2, it doesn't matter how I draw it, I have how many pairs of electrons? One, two, three, four pairs. If we have four pairs of electrons, we are going to be tetrahedral. Our electron pair geometry is tetrahedral. But wait a second. You didn't draw it. You drew it in a straight line. Unless you know what the shape of the molecule is going to be, and what is the shape of this molecule? The molecular shape happens to be, I have two lone pairs, so I have four pairs and two lone pairs. Four pairs and two lone pairs meet, I'm bent. So the actual shape here is bent. Well, I didn't draw it bent. Doesn't matter. It's bent. So that's the whole purpose. We draw the Lewis structure. We figure out how many electron pairs are around the central atom, bonding and non-bonding, and then how many are bonding, how many lone pairs, and we come up with the electron pair geometry and the shape. Unless you know what they are before you draw them, you're not going to know what they are before you draw them. That just makes sense. So let's do the next one, and we'll talk a little bit. Nitrogen has five valence electrons, plus two times one electron for hydrogen, plus seven electrons for chlorine. So that would be 14 valence electrons. Well, who's in the center? Well, it looks like I would say nitrogen. Who's written first and least electronegative? Hydrogen's not it. Hydrogen's not in the middle. 
So if I put an N in the middle, does it matter where I put the other three? No. H, H, C, L. Bond them. Two, four, six. Filling out tetrachloride. of chlorine. Eight, ten, twelve. Two left over. Where do they go? Nitrogen. Fourteen. So now, this is a terminal atom, right? So it doesn't matter. It's got eight electrons. It doesn't matter. We're looking right there. So how, for my electron pair geometry, I have one, two, three, four pairs. So that's also tetrahedral. My shape, I have one lone pair, three bonding pairs. So if we go back up to here, four pairs, one lone pair would be trigonal pyramidal. So we have trigonal pyramidal as a shape. Now I want to point something out and we're going to get to. We've noticed here, draw this. I have group 14, 15, 16, 17. And the top elements of each group, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine. Carbon has one, two, three, four. Nitrogen has five valence electrons. Oxygen has six valence electrons. And fluorine has seven valence electrons. And the whole group's this way. That means for group 14, carbon prefers to make four bonds. Now it can make, you know, bonds like that. Carbon will make, we'll do a couple carbons here. It'll make a double bond. It'll make triple bond, two double bonds. It can also make two double bonds. All right, but typically carbon makes four bonds. Nitrogen likes to make three bonds and a lone pair. Oxygen likes to make two bonds. There's two lone pairs. Now it could also be, again, these can have be double bonds too. So N and O, I can have, for N, I can have a double and a single and a lone pair. It could be bent. Can N make four bonds? Yes, ammonium is a prime example when you're polyatomic ions. But this is what they prefer. You get oxygen. And the halogens prefer just to have one bond. This is what we prefer. We don't always get what we prefer. I don't know if that makes sense to you or not, but going out to dinner is a prime example. You're going out with somebody, group of friends, a date, doesn't matter. You don't always get to go where you want to go. At least you shouldn't always get to go <laughs> where you want to go. So we don't always get what we prefer. This is what they prefer to have, but sometimes the molecule dictates something else. Sometimes oxygen, oxygen can make a triple bond. Doesn't always want to, but it can. The carbon monoxide would be an example. So let's go back down. So hopefully that helps clear up, like see some patterns. Because the whole groups do this. Now like carbon doesn't make four bonds. Silicon wants to make four bonds. Nitrogen wants to make three. So there's phosphorus and arsenate. Oxygen two, sulfur two, selenium two. Right? The halogens want to make one. Sometimes the halogens are central atoms, which we'll get to. So it just depends. But that's what they prefer. A couple more examples here. Dichloromethane and oxygen difluoride. Dichloromethane, electron count. Well, we have four plus two times one 
plus 2 times 7. So that would be what, 20 electrons? Bond them. Well, who's in the center first before I bond them? It has to be carbon. Does it matter where I put the hydrogens and the chlorines? Absolutely not. It's a symmetrical molecule so we can rotate it however we want. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. Is that a good Lewis structure? Well, each hydrogen has a duet. Each carbon has an octet. Chlorine has an octet. We're good. So we have four bonds. Four bond is, again, tetrahedral. Shape. In this case, the shape is also tetrahedral. Oxygen difluoride. Electron count. Six for oxygen, plus two times seven electrons. For fluorine, so that would be 20 electrons. Now, take, take a pause. 20 electrons, three atoms, with a group 16 in the middle. SCL2, 20 electrons with a group 16 in the middle. I wonder what it's going to look like. So who's in the middle for OF2? Well, who's weak structure negative? Written first, oxygen. So we have F, O, F. Bond, 2, 4, octet, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and 16. Extra electrons in the middle, 18 and 20. So oxygen, how many bonds does it have around it? And how many pairs of, of lone pairs? Electron pair geometry. And so we have one, two, three, four again. So we are tetrahedral. Shape-wise, we have two lone pairs. Four pairs total, so we're bent. Two more. POCl3 and PCl5. POCl3, we got 32 electrons. Who which atom is in the center. So a lot of students will put in oxygen in the center. However, it's not. Why isn't it in the center? Well, it's not written first, and it's not the least electronegative. So don't fall into the trap that, oh, O's in the middle right now, it's in the middle. Sometimes though, sometimes when we have compounds, the central atom written is the central atom, or the middle atom written is the central atom. So how do you tell? just like anything else. It's lots of practice. You will have to practice this over and over again. Just like any, if you want to get good at anything else, you got to do the same thing. Free throws, soccer, dance, it doesn't matter. It's the same thing here. So, plus, we'll be able to tell if we're going to, let's, let's do it wrong with oxygen in the middle, and we'll check. So, P, Cl, Cl, and Cl. Bond them. Two, four. Use this color. We'll use this color. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight, thirty, thirty-two. Perfect. That's a valid Lewis book. Oxygen has eight, phosphorus has eight, chlorine has eight, everybody's got eight. Great. However, formal charge. We talk formal charge. What's going on? Well, chlorine has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Each chlorine has seven. Each chlorine brought in seven. So each chlorine is neutral. Perfect. Oxygen in the middle is one, two, three, four. Oxygen right now has four, brought in six, so it's technically plus two. 
Phosphorus has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Phosphorus has seven, brought in five, it's technically minus two. Now, is there a way to minimize the formal charge here? And is the more electronegative atom negative? The answer to both of those, well, first one is there's a way to minimize it because for the answer to the second question, oxygen is more electronegative and is not negative. So let's move. If we take the oxygen here out and the, put the phosphorus in the middle, oh, it didn't move the whole atom. Let's see. Now phosphorus is one, two, three, four, it has four brought in five, it's still plus one. Oxygen, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, has seven, brown six, it's still minus one. Is there a way to even minimize it more? And the answer, of course, is yes. It doesn't matter which pair. A lot of times we take the top one. And if I double bond, now everybody's formal charge is zero. So that would be the best Lewis structure of POCO3. Because... Phosphorus is in the central atom and it's zero. It can violate the octet rule, octet rule. Oxygen has zero formal charge. Chlorine has zero formal charge. And there you go. What's the electron pair geometry of POCl3? Well, this counts as one, two, three, four. So it's still tetrahedral. The shape is also tetrahedral. Why? Because the double bound counts as one, because we're in one area of space. PCL5. If we look at PCL5, we have five electrons plus five times seven electrons, 40 electrons. So for PCL5, who's in the middle? Well, phosphorus. CLs. One, two, three, four, five. I just got five chlorines around. Bond them. Two. Four, six, eight, ten. Octets, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. Some of you guys are pretty sharp with your multiplication tables and know that eight times five is forty. So we're going to get all forty electrons in. It just takes me longer to draw them on this screen. There we go. That's it. There is PCO5. What's the electron pair geometry? Well, we've got five bonds. One, two, three, four, five. Phosphorus can do that. That's trigonal by pyramidal. Shape. Since there's no lone pairs, the shape is also trigonal by pyramidal. All right, now I want to do one where there are more than one, not more than one, but yeah, when there's more than one central atom. So let's talk about when there's more than one central atom. CH3, 2, CO. So it's written like this for a reason. So otherwise it would be C, what, 3, H3O. So if you saw... C three H three, no, so C three H six. Excuse me. Oh, there's multiple ways to put that together. All right, there are because these are this is bigger than just a simple molecule like we've been doing so far. So since there's more than one way to put it together, we write it like this: CH three two CO because we know there's two CH threes. So we're gonna have a CH H, H, two of those, and the CO, when you see CO like this, usually it's a C double bond O. So these two CH3s are bonded to a CO. Let's draw it. So I have three Cs. One, two, three. They're going to usually be in a line. I have the CH3s, so one, two, three. One, two, three. And then the O. All right. Draw. Well, first we gotta do electrons. 
So we have carbon has four electrons and one times, sorry, three times one electron. And there's two of those plus four electrons plus six electrons. So that's 10. So we have what? Eight and six, 14, 24 electrons all together. So let's bond. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. And is that good? The answer, of course, is no. Why? Because the carbon in the middle is not good. So we're going to have to take an electron pair from oxygen and double bond. So in orange here, are these two C's for the CH3's and in pink will be my central carbon. So as you can see, there's two different electron pair geometries, both oranges and the pink C's. So orange, the electron pair geometry is four bonds, tetrahedral. For the pink C, the uh, geometry, electron pair geometry would be three pairs, because that's one, two, three. That'd be trigonal planar. A little side note, trigonal is not an electron pair geometry or a shape. Trigonal is part of the description of a geometry, electron pair geometry and or shape. So trigonal means nothing. So if you give me a, oh, it's trigonal. Trigonal what? So we need to know it's trigonal planar. Shapes. So the orange C's are also tetrahedral. And the pink C, the molecular shape, is still trigonal planar. So that's some shapes. Now, in the next video, next lecture, we'll talk about the polarity of molecules how we turn it as polar or not, and we'll do a lot more shapes. We'll come up with electron pair geometry, shape, and we'll, we'll go out from there. Talk to you later.